<laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? Sean Mathis here at the Agency Alliance, and uh, I'm sitting here with Jason, and his, uh, his daughter's going to actually join us here for a quick moment. But um, we're talking about Jason's success in, in life insurance sales. Um, he actually was the winner of our 30 and 30 Live Sales Accelerator 2.0 contest that we just finished up uh, last week. Hi. And uh, he, uh, he, won, he won the contest. We had two categories in the contest. One was the uh, uh, most number of apps, and the second was the other category was uh, top premium. And uh, Jason won the uh, top apps uh, for, the, for the 30 days. Uh, we'll talk about his results in here in just a minute, but Jason's an independent agent out of Joplin, Missouri. And, you know, I've worked with thousands of agents all over the country. And one of the big questions that I always get with folks is, you know, you know, we're working with you or, or does utilizing social media or technology work in smaller towns, or I live in a rural market. I don't know if this is right for me. And I think, uh, you know, Jason is just a, uh, a shining example of, of what happens when you utilize technology. Uh, regardless of whether you're in an urban market or a rural market uh, or you're in the big city or you know you've got two million people or you know twenty thousand people in your in your town now Joplin's a little bigger than twenty thousand but um, it's, it's still you know in comparison to like a Dallas LA New York or Miami it's it's what I would call it a rural market and uh, you know as long as you're utilizing strategies uh, that work today for consumers, you know, consumers have certain ways that they want to uh, be met and things that they respond to. And it doesn't matter where they're from. And once you understand how to leverage those, your your sales will skyrocket. And uh, so Jason's been in the life insurance business for just a little over 12 months now. And uh, his results, I would say, are probably in the top 5% of the country uh, among independent agents when it comes to life sales. So, uh, Jason, I appreciate you taking time, man. There's, you know, I get questions all the time and, um, you know, how, how we can leverage technology to increase our life sales. And uh, does this, uh, you know, does using social media work for life insurance and financial services? And so it's been an awesome journey creating this program and then actually bringing it to market and having somebody uh, aggressive like yourself that, you know, really just took the, uh, the bull by the horns and ran with it and just really crushed the 30 and 30 contest and then being willing to share some of that success with uh, with folks. Uh, so I know you're busy and we'll keep it quick, but tell us a little bit, Jason, how you got into um, life insurance and what that journey has been like over the first 12 months, you know, prior to uh, joining us and getting into the contest. But uh, so that's the first question. But before that, what are your results over the last 30 days? How did you end up with uh, with our contest uh, in terms of app counts and anything that you might have pending as a result of that contest? October my total sales were uh, 44 applications. Nice, 44 life apps in 30 days. Man, that's incredible. Um, <laughs> I, I was a I was a top agent um, for Liberty Mutual. I won the Rookie of the Year contest whenever I uh, whenever I sold in, in 2012. It was my first full uh, 12 months at Liberty Mutual. Started in 2011, went through all the training and whatnot. Um, and I was a I was a top agent uh, for that Rookie Year out of like 1,500 that were were sold. And I can tell you, nobody uh, in in our entire company uh, at that level. Were, was selling anything near 44 applications a month. So that's a, that's a feat in and of itself. Um, what, what kind of tell me a little bit about what got you into life insurance and what that journey has been like, because life insurance is a tough gig, man. And, um, you know, it's one of those industries that's kind of been unchanged over the last 10, 15 years. You know, people that, that get into life sales have been doing it the same way for a really long time. Companies are teaching the same strategies that they taught 10, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, so tell us what that was like, you know, getting licensed and kind of your, your business plan and how you were proceeding prior to uh, working with us. Well, really, I was uh, recruited into the industry by an agent friend. Um, uh, basically, he was just growing his team to do life insurance, um, kind of joined up with him. 
Um, he was a veteran agent, so I kind of figured there was a lot to be learned uh, from somebody who'd been in the industry as long as he had. Um, so he brought me in and we kind of started kind of a different approach. It wasn't like the, the typical where you have somebody that will sit down and make a list of all the you know friends and family that you've ever known and call them right now and get them on the phone. And it, it wasn't that approach, which is what I liked about it. Um, but he, he focused more on forming the relationships with uh, referral partners, realtors, lenders, you know, that kind of stuff that, uh, you know, where people are in that stage of life where they're going to be looking at life insurance. Uh, so really up until joining this program, um, I was a hundred percent referral based, um, <clears throat> go out, talk to people, um, find out who they knew, who I could help. Uh, there are some tools that I had um, as an independent agent. Um, so I started making partnerships with captive agents just to go out and say, hey, you were, you know, you know, you're limited in this area. I'm not. Let me be your plan B. You know, if you have somebody that fits this uh, category, let me help them. Um, so and that was pretty much it. I mean, it was just old school walk in pavement, uh, go out and just drum up business as much as you can. Yeah. So tell us like what a, what a typical day looks like. And I think that's, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, there's kind of two ways, even within the old school, you've got the, um, you know, the create the list and then call them, ask them for referrals while you're, you know, at a meeting with them, pounding phones. Um, you've got a lot of folks who do mailers. I know I've, I've talked to a lot of agents doing uh, final expense and mortgage protection and so they'll, they'll join mailer programs anybody that's gotten a, a mortgage loan and and just send out mass mailers and postcards things like that same thing with final expense uh, send out mailers and kind of beat the phones that way um, and then you've got the referral aspect of you know reaching out to mortgage lenders and realtors and you know doing the bni and the chamber meetings uh, but you know, tell us what what does what a typical day look like um for, for a life insurance agent just getting started, no book of business to cross sell, and you're just going out there and, and trying to build this thing from scratch. What did that look like? Uh, really, for me, I just, uh, I got a book, um, actually probably still have it somewhere around here, um, that was all about the uh, local chamber of commerce. Uh, yeah, I just went in, uh, found out who was listed in the local chambers, um, and I would go in and I would start, say, okay, today I'm gonna go talk to captive agents. I would go find out, you know, I'd kind of map it out and I'd go spend a couple hours and I'd go walk in, you know, just walk in off the street. Here's my card. Here's what I can offer to you as a captive agent. Um, then one day I decided not to go talk to lenders. So I just, uh, started, you know, I think when I did lenders, I think I just called them because um, <clears throat> I know they're usually out and about, but, um, but I just started calling them saying, hey, um, I'm looking for somebody that I can refer business to um who you know can we set up a meeting can we get together can we talk can we uh you know figure out what this would look like um so usually i would spend a couple hours you know prospecting for referral partners more so than prospecting for you know clients uh so it wasn't a i never really did the door-to-door -door, you know go door knocking through a neighborhood kind of thing i uh, never did that um so it, any given day, I was, you know, trying to set up meetings with uh, realtors, insurance agents, lenders, you know, anybody that I thought would be kind of a natural referral partner. Um, I was trying to set up time to get sit down and have coffee with them. Yeah, and that's, I mean, I feel like if you're gonna if you're gonna ground and pound, as I call it, I mean that if you're gonna spend the time calling somebody, you might as well call somebody that can send you business on an ongoing basis, I mean, because you're going to either make a phone call to a client that you may or may not get, but even when you get that client, you know, the lifetime referral value of that person is, is you know, probably maybe a couple of people. Um, but then, you know, if you can get a lender, a realtor, or divorce attorney, or you know, business banker, somebody like that, then obviously you can, uh, you know, seal a relationship and they'll be able to send you a couple of clients, you know, depending on their volume every month for as long as you can maintain that relationship. And what I found is, you know, that was kind of how I started my PNC deal was working with, you know, realtors and lenders. And, and, you know, if I'm going to make a cold call, let me call somebody who can consistently send me business because at some point as you build that, uh, eventually 
you know, theoretically, you wouldn't have to continue making calls because you'll build a big enough referral base that you'll have the, you know, the incoming um, business that you need in order to, to meet your financial goals. Uh, the problem that I found with that, though, uh, in, in my own in my own business and what I've seen many agents uh, struggle with is it's kind of twofold. One, that process takes a long time, right? Like people don't just meet you and decide, okay, I'm going to send all my clients to you since you walked in and, and dropped your card, right? So there t it takes time to build that relationship. Um, you know, you have to have several instances where they do send you business, you close it, they get good feedback and they get comfortable with that. So there's an element of time that, that it takes to, to make those relationships happen and, and to have them, you know, really kind of flourish. Uh, and then the other caveat to that is that if your referral partner has a bad month, you have a bad month. And that was kind of the, the, the problem and what forced me into looking at technology and kind of newer ways to be able to generate that and be self-sufficient because when my referral partners had a bad month, that trickled down to me and then I had a bad month. And I relied so much on referral partners that, um, you know, there would be things that maybe I didn't even do wrong, but my income was was fluctuating based on, on their production. Then you've got the cyclical nature of, of real estate agents and loan officers where they have peak times and uh, you kind of have to figure out, okay, well, when are they busy? When are they not busy? Um, you know, typically they'll have surges at the end of the month with closings versus in the, the beginning of the month is kind of slow. And so that was kind of tough for me. Did you see that same kind of, um, same kind of thing happen with, with you working with referral partners? Well, um, being still kind of fairly new to the game, um, really haven't seen enough of that, you know, fluctuation throughout the year. Um, for me, the hardest part was just uh, cultivating the relationship to where they would trust me enough to send me their clients. Um, you know, I've got some of the referral partners that, you know, I talked to, you know, at the very beginning that are just now starting to kind of send people my way. Um, as I started doing the PNC side, um, you know, now I'm getting, you know, four or five referrals a week from, you know, my referral partners and, you know, real estate and lending combined, which is great. But like you said, it doesn't happen right away. I mean, you got to cultivate those friendships and build some trust with them first. Cause, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, just because you go in and shake hands and introduce yourself doesn't mean that they're just going to instantly trust you and start sending all their people to you. Absolutely. And in that time of cultivation, obviously, you've either got to have enough money socked away that you can live or things get pretty stressful, uh, financially speaking. So, you know, obviously, at some point, you decided to look at other ways, which ultimately ended up you know, you and I getting on a conversation and, and working together, uh, kind of what what transition for you to decide that, you know, hey, I think I need to look at some other way other than the referral partners and, and getting relationships through the chamber and networking and things like that. Kind of what what happened for you to start looking elsewhere? And then what was what was it that you were looking for when you started searching for new ways to generate business? Really, I mean, I, I guess it kind of come down to ambition, I guess, because um, I mean, yeah, I could stay with, you know, four or five, you know, referrals a week, which is phenomenal. Um, I would take that, you know, any given day, but um, I didn't want to live and die by my referral partners, as you kind of mentioned earlier, you know, if they have a bad month, I didn't want that to make, make it so that I had a bad month. And, you know, I wanted to be able to stand on my own two feet and find out ways to generate business um, on my own. And um, as we kind of look at the landscape of lead generation, um, going online, social media, that kind of thing, um, that, that's where it's all at right now. Um, I know it's kind of an ever-changing um, game of lead generation and what works this month on Facebook will probably be different six months from now. We'll have to tweak it a little bit, but, um, but that's kind of where everything is. It's not, uh, people are living on their Facebook profile now, uh, as opposed to, you know, going out and, you know, walking the pavement, walking the neighborhoods, doing that kind of thing. So I just uh, started looking at what other people were doing that was uh, proving to be successful. Um, came across another guy in one of your programs over in St. Louis. Um, kind of watched what he had going on, was hearing some of his results. <clears throat> and 
uh, it didn't take long to kind of drill down and figure out like, okay, you know, what are you doing? Because I need to, I need to be doing something similar. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. So then you, you, you obviously uh, joined our program, made investment, um, and uh, took part in our, our launch of Life Sales Accelerate 2.0. Kind of tell us the difference that moving toward technology and, and social media, um, what that changed and, and how it's been different for you since. Well, I mean, uh, the biggest thing is, uh, I mean, technology is a beautiful thing. Uh, to be able to run a whole campaign um, and have everything just automated to a point that really the only time I have to get involved is once that lead has already clicked the button, submitted their info, and they're responding to the initial contact. <clears throat> um, that's the only time that I really have to get involved with any of it is when I actually have a live client that's ready to talk. Um, I mean, it's been amazing to see how, uh, where before it was, you know, I go up and I just cold call you, I walk up and I start a conversation with you. And the whole time I'm in my head trying to figure out how do I get this conversation over to life insurance, which nobody really wants to talk about, uh, especially out of the blue. Uh, so usually when you bring that up, all of a sudden they've checked out or they're finding ways to get out of the conversation. <clears throat> So now to be able to get um, get my information in front of people, you know, in a method that they're already using on their phones, it's right there. And then boom, now my contact info is in their hands. I've got their contact info, uh, we're communicating. And what's been amazing is I'd have to go back and actually try to count. I should have kept track of it along the way. Um, but a lot of people are, you know, we're, you know, obviously we're running a promotion. Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, we're running a promotion. I would kind of start talking about that. And they're like, you know, that, that's great. But what I really need to talk about is life insurance. And it was amazing how many people were just like, you know, they're actively looking and actively searching for information and needing to get life insurance. Yeah, I think you, you touched on some really good points. It, you know, when you're when you're when you're selling insurance, whether it be life insurance or PNC or whatever, you know what I found was agents, and I'm looking at other agents who are who are uh, struggling in the industry. You know, as I'm selling insurance, and I saw that people were spending so much time talking with suspects instead of prospects, right? Like we suspect this person may be interested in PNC or in life insurance or whatever, but they're not really a prospect until we've qualified them and we know that they are legitimately interested in hearing what we have to say about you know, life insurance. Until then, they're suspects. And so we're spending 80, 90% of our time with suspects and only 10% of our time with prospects. Whereas when you can create a system and, and a funnel that will kind of weed out the suspects so that you're spending 90% of your time with prospects and only 10% of your time with suspects, it completely changes the game. And that's where you can, you know, really spend your time and talking with people who are legitimately in, legitimately interested. And then you're only losing people who, you know, give you the price objection or they can't qualify for the policy or something like that versus spending time talking with somebody that you come to find out 20 minutes in the, they have no interest or, oh, I have it through work or whatever else. And then you got to move on to the next one. So it's just a, a really a shift in, in how you're spending your time and who you're spending it with. And you know, I think that that shift in and of itself is what really uh, changes the game for you to be able to create processes and automated ways for the customer to weed themselves out and say, oh, this isn't for me. I'm not going to fill this out. Never mind. But then those that are, boom, now you're spending all your time with people who um, have already indicated and, you know, what I call permission-based selling is how they've asked you to contact me. I mean, that's the hardest part in any sales business is finding people who actually give a shit to hear what you say and then giving you permission to engage in that conversation versus like you said, you're coming in out of the blue, you're cold calling them, um, you're starting a conversation about, hey, let's get to know each other, let's find out what you do and I do, and then, oh, by the way, hey, can I get you into the sales conversation? And you're trying to push them into the conversation rather than, pull them into the conversation and um, it's just a completely different uh, shift. So like, tell us the, you know, what, what it looks like in terms of having that shift and, and how your sales conversations 
uh, changed and what the sales process changed because obviously, you know, like you said, with the relationship, the, that takes a while to cultivate and to get those people to start sending business versus dealing with somebody who says, hey, yeah, I'm interested in life insurance. Um, let's talk. And then what that process looks like and how it's different. Well, uh, really, uh, the biggest question I get is, uh, you know, for the entire ad run that I had, <clears throat> we generated 170 leads. Uh, which was absolute insanity uh, to try to keep up with. And I'm still sorting through all of those. Uh, <clears throat> but the biggest question I get as I talk to people about this is, are you going and sitting down with all of these people face to face? I'm like, no, every last one of them have been phone sales. So it's just about um, crafting the, the right questions to ask uh, so you can do like a proper needs analysis and find out, you know, how much coverage do they actually need? You know, everybody says, well, I need a million dollars. Uh, okay. Do you really, you know, let's, you know, let's talk about this. Yeah. So, and everybody has their own process of, you know, what they do to determine that. Uh, but really um, get them on the phone. And once you have them, once you have a set appointment with them, uh, I mean, it's been crazy because, uh, <clears throat> A lot of times they're like, hey, I've already been researching this. I know the different types of insurance. Here's kind of what I'm thinking. What, you know, you tell me, you tell me what I need. So then you kind of start walking through the conversation with them. You just have the conversation about, you know, life insurance and what it is, what it is and how it works, how it doesn't work, you know, what they need to know. And really it's just, you're educating them. And then once you kind of get to the end of that process, you can say, okay, based on what you're telling me, here's what I think we should do. Okay. You know, let, let's do it. How much? Give them a quote. Awesome. Let's do this. <clears throat> and just kind of go backwards a little bit to kind of put it in perspective of the 44 apps. I ran the numbers on how many people I actually had phone appointments with versus the apps that uh, I wrote we closed at a 73% close rate. Wow. That kind of give you an idea of like, I mean, these people are like legitimately looking at this product. Yeah. We had some that were just kind of kicking tires and okay. Yeah. Whatever. <clears throat> but you know, by and large over overwhelming majority, almost three fourths of the people that we talked to uh, were interested in talking about it and uh, getting, getting coverage for them. And submitting the app, yeah. So I think you hit on a couple of really good points that I, and I kind of want to expand on a little bit is um, the the kind of the shift from face to face to um, to phone sales and you know what that's like. I know a lot of a lot of insurance agents, um, even still today on, on even on the PNC side, you know they they think that they still have to. Um, have these sit at the kitchen table appointments or come to my office appointments um, or that they have to, you know, prospect people that are within a 10 mile radius or five mile radius of their office or you know, otherwise they'll go to somebody else or something like that. And I've tried, you know, I've spent many years working with thousands of agents and, and really trying to help uh, reshape the mindset of how insurance agents think. And this was something that I was able to easily adopt and quickly see when I was selling insurance. Um, that you know, there's been a shift in, in you know, consumer behavior um, and it's not necessarily a, a shift that the insurance industry at large is keeping up with. You know, the, the, the carriers would like to, like to uh, have you believe that you, know, you still have to be able to, to have your clients come in or have to go to their appointments or they have to, you have to be close to them um, because that's what brings the value of a local agent. But the idea of a local agent uh, in the consumer's mind versus in what the industries will have you believe, you know, they, they think that consumers are, are thinking, oh, if a local agent means I have to go physically touch him or, or be able to go to my office to make a premium payment. And that's really not the case with, with the millennial generation today. Uh, and by the way, millennials are, are the uh, largest consumer group with the 
the highest, the, the largest purchasing power um, walking the planet today, they're also the most educated and most tech savvy generation to ever walk the planet as well. And so it's a very different um, shift in, in who you're talking to. But I'll also point out that baby boomers, uh, we're also seeing a trend using Facebook and technology right now that, that baby boomers are the largest growing on on social media, on Facebook in particular, that's the fastest growing segment of new profiles on Facebook are 55 and older. And they're also the highest converting age demographic on Facebook in particular. So although millennials are the largest and the most tech savvy, there's a much higher penetration and you know, this whole technology and social media thing is new and exciting to baby boomers and they're actually quite responsive. Um, but looking at millennials, their idea of a local agent is, can I talk to this person? Can I reach the same person? You know, I don't necessarily just want to call into a call center. And I think in, in, in generations today, that's what they think of as local. They just want that single point of contact, that person they can call. If I can call Jason, if I can message him on Facebook, if I can get his cell phone, if I know that's my guy, I don't have to go and see him and have, have coffee with him. I've done you know, nearly $2 million in sales, and I have never done an in-person in um, sales appointment with any of my clients. In fact, it's very rare that I ever meet one of my clients in the flesh. But you know, we can have a meeting like this using a, using a webinar or Skype or whatever, and it's the same thing as, as being able to sit down with them across the table, uh, in my experience. So yeah, I think that, you know, it brings a really good point in, in being able to shift and, and say, hey, I, I understand what the consumers are are seeing. I, I can adjust those and meet those needs um, and being flexible to know that, hey, the, the industry that we've been in, in this little box called the insurance industry, that's been overwhelmingly dominated by, you know, middle-aged white men in suits uh, is vastly changing is, is probably one of the industries that's been most impacted by technology. And the agents like Jason here that are able to get a hold of that and grasp their mind around the idea of meeting a customer where they want to be met. There's amazing tools and resources that are out there. And so you know, Jason also talked about a 73% closing ratio. And the reason that's possible is that with technology like Facebook, we're able to actually identify people who are not only in this perfect age demographic and, and geography. So we can say, hey, I want to talk with people that are, you know, fit this demographic criteria. I also want them to be interested in life insurance, in term insurance, in universal life insurance, in whole life insurance, in you know uh, kids policies. We can even drill down to you know types of companies that they may follow. If I want to sell juvenile policies, we know that Gerber has an amazing, amazing uh, following of parents who understand and believe in insuring uh, juveniles early on. Uh, we can actually target people who are interested and follow those types of uh, websites or uh, Facebook pages. And it makes our targeting extremely, extremely targeted to get into those conversations with people who you don't have to sell on life insurance. You just have to sell them on your life insurance. And I think that's the big, the big hurdle in selling life insurance is there's, you know, so much misunderstandings about life insurance and that whole educating piece is like getting people to understand the need for life insurance and I think we, we spend so much time trying to convince people who don't know anything about life insurance we have to first teach them about life insurance and then teach them why it's important for them and then sell them on the type of policy and then sell them on us whereas we can get rid of all that initial education piece and find the people who are already educated that just need to talk to a, a, a life insurance person. You know, 25% of people, according to the uh, Life Happens, 25% uh, of people want life insurance but don't know where to buy it. That's one in four people who, who already want it. They just don't know who to call to buy it. They don't have an agent. And that's where we can find those people who just need somebody to buy it from. And then we can show up and meet them at the right time and place in their newsfeed with an amazing offer and get into that conversation. So, uh, Jason, one of the things that, that you used that was really, really powerful was, was some incentive-based marketing and different promotions. 
And, um, you know, I want to kind of talk about that, you know, we, you know, incentive marketing has been around for a long, long time and, and really been dominated in print media by like car dealers and things like that. You know, they'll send out a mailer with like a scratcher and it says, hey, win one of three prizes, you scratch it off and all you got to do is come into the dealership and, and give us a car and you'll win an Oreo and a rug or a year of free gas and one person will win a, you know, a new Camaro, right? And you send out 50,000 of these mailers and then, People will win, oh, I won, and they'll either call in and send an appointment to come get their prize. And then, of course, boom, you hit the lot, and now all of a sudden, let's talk about a car, right? And so this isn't like a new concept. Incentive marketing has been around for a long time, but what we found is incentive marketing utilizing social media has really been a game changer with regards to millennials. Uh, they call the millennial generation, you know, eight and 10 marketing firms are using incentive marketing right now. Uh, specifically around the millennial generation uh, because millennials are what they call the experienced generation. You know, you've got Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and the big thing is, right, taking selfies, here's my selfie stick, right? You get your selfie stick and you pose in front of the fucking Eiffel Tower or whatever it is. And you want everybody to believe that you're, you're just experiencing life and you're living epic and you've got all these amazing places that you're visiting and stuff like that, uh, going to ball games or whatever. Um, that's like the mindset of millennials and millennials have been surveyed and 74 percent said that they would actually rather spend money on an experience than a product or service or they would rather spend money to go on a vacation than they would save it and put money in the bank like that's just where millennials are at so uh, what we have found is enticing millennials with incentives valuable incentives that they think you know are worthwhile for them to engage in a conversation has been an amazing way to get them on the phone to get them to slow down because they are a busy generation they get hit with ads all all the time three three to five thousand ads a day is what the average millennial sees between instagram facebook snapchat print media billboards radio tv it's everywhere text notification vegan marketing i mean we're just inundated email marketing every day they're just pounding with ads and so the way to really stand out is to offer them incentive and say hey if you will have a conversation with me about this, you could win this, or we'll give you this, or whatever. So it's this value change in incentive and, and running promotions and things like that. And we've seen in the insurance industry for a long time, hey, we're going to run a referral contest, send a referral, and get entered to win an iPad. That was a big thing, like incentive marketing. People did iPads uh, when they were brand new, and like, hey, send us a referral, you'll be entered to win an iPad, or whatever. And um, you know, we found a way to really harness that and be able to offer promotions. So, you know, without having to give your secret sauce away about what promotions are working best for you, um, tell us a little bit about incentive marketing and how you used it before and what your thoughts were, um, you know, moving into it. Because I know a lot of agents are really skeptical, uh, like, oh, I don't, that's gonna get us the wrong type of client. You know, I don't want people who just wanna win something. I want people who are interested, but obviously you sold 44 life policies in 30 days. Uh, incentives played a big role in that. How did incentives help you and in, in kind of what was your mindset moving, going toward this type of, of marketing campaign? Well, I mean, for the big part, it's a, it's primarily used as a conversation starter. <clears throat> I mean, that's been my biggest experience with it is, um, yeah, I mean, you go up and talk to somebody, odds are they're probably not going to want to transition that conversation into life insurance. But if I start with a promotion like this and say, hey, we're going to offer you this in exchange for just having this conversation with me. Well, now people are, you know, their antennas go up and I'm like, well, yeah, I, you know, I should probably look at life insurance anyway. Um, you know, the, the incentive helps. Um, of, out of everybody I talked to, I would say maybe three, maybe four were like, you know what, Jason, honestly, I was responding because I wanted the trip. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of people that are already interested in what we're offering. Um, the incentive, that's just a bonus. The, yeah. Like I said, I had, you know, several along the way that are like, yeah, you know, that's great. You know, that the offer, that's awesome. But uh, really, we just need to talk about life insurance. We've, we've been trying to find this or, you know, yeah, I could I could go on a whole nother hour of the stories that people share of you know their experience trying to get life insurance being denied for whatever reason. Um, but um, 
really is used as a conversation starter for me. Uh, whether it be uh, just, just on Facebook and um, like just uh, I think two days ago, I had somebody on my timeline. I was like, hey, I'm looking for this. Anybody got connections? So I was like, well, maybe I do. I'll message you. So I started a conversation with them, find out what they're looking for. And it turns out, yeah, I did have something that could help them. <clears throat> now, am I going to sell their insurance? Probably not. But they know that it's what I use for my business. So now they're already telling people, hey, you need to go see Jason. Hey, you need to go see Jason. Yeah. For me, it's a, it's a uh, conversation starter. Uh, I use it a lot for uh, my referral partners as well. Um, currently have a little promo going with my, one of my referral partners um, to help generate some uh, business for her. Um, but yeah, um, it, it's a great tool. Uh, obviously, um, each state is a little different on what you can and cannot do as far as incentives go. Um, so I guess that'd probably be my only little asterisk to the whole conversation is make sure you're well versed on what you can and can't do. Don't get yourself in trouble. But um, there's always ways to be able to utilize the incentives. And uh, I mean, there's there's always more than one way to use them, whether it be with clients, referral partners or just overall generosity. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that I think that, that I want to highlight here is, you know, it's a, it's a conversation starter and they're, they're with, with uh, Facebook in particular is when you have an incentive, whether it's a, a 42 inch flat screen TV or a three day trip to Orlando, whatever it is that you're giving away, you have the ability to laser target in on those people. And like Jason said, find people who are not just interested in that theme, but also interested in life insurance. So that's the beauty of being able to do, to utilize Facebook is that we can multi-layer the, uh, the targeting. And I can say, hey, if I'm giving away, let's say two Mavericks tickets um, to engage in this conversation with me, um, I'm gonna do an enter to win. And I wanna find people who are interested in the Dallas Mavericks, but also interested in life insurance. So it's not just that they're, it's very rare that you get somebody who just wants the thing, because you're also making sure that they're doing this. So, you know, in years past, all you could do is say, hey, I'm going to offer this thing out. And you would get a lot of trash that would just want the thing because you had no way of knowing if they were interested in the thing and the product. Right. But now we can say, I want them to be interested in the thing and the product. And that way you're, you're using the product as a, right, OK, let's do this because we need we're interested in this product anyway but now we can get this thing if we just do it now it really collapses that window of time that that sales process would normally take because if you're just trying to get people interested in the product okay they got to think about it they want to shop it around there's no real urgency but now if you can tie something that they love like hey i've got a family and we want we've been wanting to go to orlando anyway and we've also we know we need life insurance but now we've got this thing it's like a godsend it's all happening for us at once and by the way, there's a deadline that you have to have this conversation by, so you can just get them off the fence and use that thing as a way to just hurry up and move them along. And um, it's something different that other people aren't offering that they're not able to do um, because they either don't know how or whatever the case might be. But it's really just kind of that perfect blend of giving millennials that, hey, you need this thing anyway, and we're going to toss this in with it. Let's just go ahead and get it done. And because of the targeting and because our ad copy, it just resonates with them and meets them at the right place at the right time with the right product and offer. And it just, those things combined produce a, a perfect scenario to have them engage in that conversation. Um, and, you know, like we said, it doesn't have to be somebody right there in your area. They can be from anywhere. This stuff works regardless of, of where you're at. You know, we've got um, uh, our premium count was out of California. Our app count was here in Joplin, Missouri. And so, you know, it doesn't matter where you're at in the country, the, the same strategies work because it's a, it's meeting consumers in the way that they want to be met with the right offers at the right time and being able to, to really hone in on that and, um, 
and get that conversation started in a unique way because there's many different ways like you said that you can go about this um, but it's just finding that unique blend in your market area that, that's going to work well for you so just i know you got to get going and i'll let you off here but if there was if there's one thing that you would suggest insurance agents that are watching this who are trying to figure out ways to generate business um you know if there's uh, if there's a way that you could say hey if you're doing this the way I was, if you were doing your traditional sales agent, uh, what would you have them consider or, uh, you know, put into their marketing mix to speed things up so they don't have to wait years and years for these, for this book to build and these referral partners to, to start uh, sending? Well, I mean, I would probably go back to something that I mentioned to you before is, uh, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, I I knew that uh, Facebook marketing was kind of the way that everything was going, and I spent uh, probably two or three months trying to figure it out myself, um, and getting frustrated when it was only generating, you know, just like one or two leads here and there, um, and even then it wasn't really anything that uh, I ever sold. So really, the you know, it was just wasted time and money and effort. Um, so uh, really for me, I would say uh, jump into a program like, like Life Sales 2.0, Life Sales Accelerator. Um, jump in with the guys uh, like yourself that have already figured it out. They've already done the legwork. They've already done the trial and error. I mean, yeah, I could spend another year to two years of my life figuring it all out and I might get there <clears throat> or I could uh, just come in and learn from the guys who already have it figured out and uh, just implement it and off we go. Yeah, and I think Jason brings up a good point, you know, just finding, you can find something that, that has been proven to work, but you can still make it your own. You know, like everybody has their sales process and has their way that they're gonna they're gonna implement these strategies but you know the, the conversations jason having I'm, obviously are different than what other people are having because he did better than other people um so you know every market's going to be a little bit different um but i think you know people like jason that, that really um come in and, and just absolutely crush it with our programs are people who are open-minded and who really are just willing to to go about things a different way i always tell people hey if you work with me if you just wipe the slate clean with anything that you thought you knew about marketing or about facebook or about social media if you just give me a blank canvas and just listen and then implement and then fine tune it to fit your your market and your business and your agency and to help you know reach your goals um you know you'll you'll really you'll really be able to succeed in 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 ways that you probably never thought you could do um you know so tell us since the before we leave what what are your goals now that you've seen what's possible in, in just 30 days being able to generate 170 leads and write 44 life apps in in you know, 30 days with a 70 percent closing ratio like having those kind of results obviously probably makes you step back and say shit i need to reevaluate my business plan and, and how I'm going to go about this now that I see what's possible. Right. Now, I definitely, uh, you know, kind of picking my brain a little bit, trying to figure out uh, what happens next, because, I mean, it wouldn't take too many months of that kind of uh, production and that kind of success to really be more than what uh, I can handle alone. Um, so definitely looking at, uh, you know, reevaluating the uh, validity of being a one man show, uh, definitely looking at uh, options to bring on some, if nothing else, just to help with some of the admin stuff. Um, <clears throat> originally, I was uh, going to up my goal for October, see if I could push it a little bit more, uh, but I quickly figured out that uh, I needed a couple of weeks to close all of the sales that uh, I did. Uh, I need the time to get those all issued and all that. So um, I think for November, I'm going to make another big push and see if I can't, uh, you know, take some time and uh, improve on that number a little bit more than what I did. <clears throat> uh, I'm actually licensed and uh, more than just my state, uh, given my location, uh, it made sense for me to get all you know, the surrounding states as well. 
Uh, so really all it would take is just crank those ads in some of the surrounding states. Um, and it, it wouldn't be hard to get there. I'll, I'll be busy as I'll get out, but uh, you know, it wouldn't be hard to get there. So uh, I think I'm going to take October, uh, just kind of play catch up, keep following up with those who originally responded to the ad and see if I can't get, uh, get those uh, apps issued actually get them through the med appointments and get it uh, get it all closed out and then we'll probably start fresh in November and uh, try to hit it hard again. Yeah, well, thank you, man. I really appreciate you taking some time and kind of sharing your story. Um, it's been awesome watching watching your success and uh, look forward to, to continue to work with you and, and um, you know, seeing what you're able to do. You know, I, I know that it opens up a world of possibilities, you know, big thing for agents is getting in getting their feet under them and then being able to scale and it, that that's a crossroad that many agents find it very very hard because you get to a point where you're busy enough that you need to add people but you don't have enough business to really make them pay for themselves, and you start looking at employees as expenses but when you have a scalable system like this that you could feed as many producers as you could possibly afford to hire uh, it really changes the game and you can take what would normally take agents five and ten and fifteen years in the past and collapse that down into something that you're able to achieve in 12 to 24 months it's an amazing thing and it really changes the game for for how you build an agency in today's market and i think you know for those of you that are watching uh we've got tons of products that that can help you get where you're going whether it's life insurance pnc wherever the case might be reach out to jason um you know talk with him find out what his his experience was like we'd love to see you on the other side to be able to work with you and you know like i said my first 10 months in the business i did over a million dollars in new business premium utilizing uh social media and facebook and so you know it's possible it doesn't take 10 years to build a massive agency anymore you can really build and scale a uh, an insurance agency using proven strategies like this so jason again i appreciate your time man thank you so much and uh we'll talk to you again soon all right thanks sean